Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the first segment of the night. It's Hot Take. This is the segment where we run faster, jump higher, lift stronger and ask the real questions like, how the fuck is shot put still a thing? <laughs> it's just Italian bocce, but worse, because at least Italian bocce has a nonna in the background saying crazy shit like, it helps if you pretend the ground is Mussolini. <laughs> I do not understand their culture. Now, of course, we are talking about the Olympics, specifically the most recent Olympics. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, the Olympics happens every four years or every eight prime ministers. Yeah, is that right? That's true at this point. We've had more prime ministers than James Bond. Like that is, this Olympics is different because this is some of the most stringent rules that the International Olympic Committee has ever placed on athletes to stop them protesting. Now, for those of you who don't know, protesting has been part of the Olympics since its inception. All the way back to ancient Greece, when the athletes protested to have to start passing the baton in the relay race through their hands instead of the old way. <laughs> and even in the modern Olympics in 1906, Peter O'Connor, an Irish athlete being forced to be part of the British team, climbed up the flag podium and raised the Irish green and gold which was uh, really is something amazing. I really feel for him, you know, being forced to be part of Britain and the British family and team when you don't want to be. I mean, a real Meghan Markle situation there. <laughs> <laughs> and then in 1936, African-American runner Jesse Owens ran so fast at the Berlin Olympics, he blew Hitler's mind in Berlin, a feat that wasn't repeated for another nine years. <laughs> But the thing is, protests are part of the Olympics, which is why this is such a ridiculous rule. There were protests at the Sochi Olympics for pro-LGBT demonstrations. There were protests at the Beijing Olympics for pro-Taiwan um, protests and pro-Hong Kong protests. There were even protests at the 2012 London Games with Paul McCartney singing Hey Jude, which I imagine was about Israel. Yeah, I feel like all Beatles songs are about Israel in some way. <laughs> if you listen, there's little hints like, I want to hold your land. <laughs> it's subtle, but you got to listen out yeah, for you it. Gotta, yeah, you got to listen it's out fun. for it. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely what's happening. <laughs> but the reason why this is a particular issue is because the IOC has had for decades, since honestly the 60s or 70s, something called Rule 50 in its rules, which forbids any expressions of political or social motivations within anywhere to, to do in the Olympic arena. So these guidelines, they've created guidelines saying that you are allowed to voice your opinion at media conferences, uh, at team meetings, and on social media, but anywhere else within the Olympics, it's completely not allowed. They're like, oh yeah, you, you can do it, just not where anyone's watching. You just, just away, away. So what, you're just standing there with a sign like those guys in construction sites on the side of the road doing nothing? Like, what is that? <laughs> But what we have to realize is that they've said they don't want anything considered disruptive. But like, what's disruptive? Do you know what I mean? They gave us some examples. They said uh, doing any expressions during other teams' opening introductions or unfurling of their banners, uh, doing anything when they're on the podium. Uh, and also, what was the third thing? Oh yeah, referring to gold as Beyonce, silver as Kelly, and bronze as the other one. <laughs> But the reality is, Alex, uh, athletes have so much expectations on them. I mean, they are literally the highest performers in their field and they're treated just as a tool, just to be their athletes first and uh, whatever else they're doing second. Like, they put their humanity behind them. I mean, even Simone Biles, one of the most incredible athletes in the history of American sports, was brutally criticised for taking a mental health break because she was seen as a tool first and a person second. And that's just not the reality that we need. Athletes need to be able to protest because some of them, by virtue of their lifestyle, race, or ethnicity, are already protesting. It's illegal to be gay in Russia, and if you're a gay person, are you protesting in Russia? If you're an African-American, are you protesting American police crimes? If you are an openly racist, do your medals get put to South Africa's tally? <laughs> like, where is the line? You have to let athletes protest. 
What, you want these athletes pissed off? You want the most well-trained, dedicated, and ridiculously strong competitors in the history of humanity pissed off. You have them all in one place, and then all of a sudden the IOC's like, oh yeah, we just turned off the hot water to see what happens. <laughs> like, what, what? 50 of the events are like pure killing. Javelin is still in there. <laughs> Do you realize that? There's competitive shooting, there's karate, there's taekwondo, which is the real one. <laughs> So I guess the point we wanted to make here is that we need to reserve space for athletes to be able to express themselves because the Olympics philosophy actually dictates that sport in the service of humanity is the greatest thing that any athlete can aspire to. And if we want to celebrate that, we should celebrate their entire humanity. So yes, I think athletes should be able to protest. And I hope you've paid attention to this like you would the regular Olympics and not just pretended to pay attention like you would the Winter Olympics. <laughs>